Netanyahu's biggest problem is he is the number four story on the news. He had hoped to be the number one story. And he's not the number one story because everything with the politics and the campaigns and vice presidential picks and, and the assassination attempt and everything else, there's a swirl of activity in Washington, very little of which involves Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, still, he's, he's been doing this for decades. But I want to make it clear that we want a peace that will last. He's a professional. I think he's going to be very focused. He is going to be trying to at least halt an erosion of support among Democrats and try to build credit with Republicans who he assesses are much more likely to be in power after the November elections. There's a piece of this where Netanyahu just wants to be the foreign leader who's addressed Congress more than any other foreign leader. When he does this, he's going to beat Winston Churchill. And I think for Netanyahu, with Netanyahu's sense of his historic role, he's the longest serving prime minister in Israeli history. There's something about just making the Hall of Fame. I can imagine if the congressional address differs a lot from what people have been telegraphing, which is that it's going to be a sort of consensus driven good behavior, how much we're cooperating kind of talk, that if Netanyahu turns sharply critical of the White House in his congressional address, there could be some scheduling problems getting the meetings he wants at the White House the next day. We've had a lot of discussions over the years, you and I. How long has it been? Who can count? This is probably their last meeting ever. It's possible that would free Biden to do something differently. But I think Biden is really going to be very focused on what do I do in my last six months as president of the United States?